Hey everybody, John from Movie Burners here, back with another movie review, and today I'm going to be discussing the 2015 release, The Witch, which is of course from Robert Eggers, a man who was making his directorial debut with this film, and uh, he's produced a pretty damn good psychological horror film, um, a film which focuses on a man called William and his excommunicated family, who have left their Puritan settlement in England behind following a religious disagreement. Uh, he decides to move them to a farm deep within the wilderness of New England, set in the 17th century colonial America, and acting as a predecessor to the infamous Salem witch trials that would fall. The film provides an interesting look into a more primitive time when people were literally terrified of a dark forest, often mistaking perfectly innocuous natural events for the supernatural. The opening shots of the film show William protesting his innocence before him and his family are banished from the plantation. The introduction of spine-tingling eerie violin music provides a perfect match for the gloomy landscape the family now find themselves at. The forest is literally made to feel alive, with numerous slow brooding shots casting uneasiness upon both the family and the viewer. The youngest member of the family, Baby Samuel, then appears to disappear under the watchful gaze of his sister. His fate heavily hinted at in the very next sequence, said sequence showing a, a naked elderly lady performing some kind of bloody ritual outside in the torrential rain and under the cover of darkness. Tomasin, played by Anya Taylor-Joy, the first-born child who was tasked with watching the baby when he was taken, is fast entering her womanhood and faces an incredibly tough time throughout, having to balance her time with looking after her younger siblings, doing extra chores, whilst dealing with the emotional turmoil that puberty brings. She also has the misfortune of being involved, directly or indirectly, with the majority of the seemingly mysterious incidents that take place in this film. This causes her mother to cast a mistrustful eye upon her. The fear and paranoia reaches fever pitch as the crops fail and their supplies begin to run low, with accusations of Satanism and witchcraft eventually being used as the explanation for the events at the farm. This is further exacerbated by a foreboding forest that really creates a suffocating air of claustrophobic tension. Her other brother Caleb, played by Harley Scrimshaw, also entering puberty, is obsessed with reciting religious scriptures, punishing himself for the newfound sinful thoughts that cross his mind, and uh, desperate to aid his father in any way possible, we see him helping to lay traps and hunt animals for their pelts within the forest. The young twins, who develop an unhealthy relationship with a demonic looking goat named Black Philip, give off creepy vibes throughout, and their mischievous personalities, not to mention tongue in Mercy's case, cause no end of bother. Catherine, played by Kate Dickey, the grief-stricken, neurotic, homesick mother, seems close to a mental breakdown at any point. She spends a sizable proportion of the film sobbing and praying for her loss in equal measures, one only taking short breaks from either when an opportunity appears to berate Thomason. William, played by Ralph Innocent, is the highly flawed father of the family, who struggles to keep things together in the face of growing adversity. Turning to his deeply devout faith in Christianity to help guide him through, though no help ever seems forthcoming. Given the rather ambiguous nature and the way Eggers portrays the story, it's never really clear whether the events taking place at the farm are indeed in the hands of a real witch per se, or whether the whole thing is a paranoid figment of the family's imagination as they crack up from the isolation. With the overwhelming majority of the film being seen in the perspective of Thomason, there appears to be an equally strong case for the real witch within the story being her. As mentioned previously, she is present when every tragedy or incident takes place, and given she seems to be the sole survivor at the end, the twins survive as well but they seem to disappear completely, it's perhaps then not a massive leap. Uh, one thing that is clear to me about this film is the overarching themes. In my mind, it's very much about the dangers of organised religion and female empowerment. Uh, the family literally tears itself apart with mistrust and self-doubt. The patriarchal heads, too obsessed with their beliefs to use logic or common sense to save themselves and their children. Finally, Thomason grows from being a child at the beginning to a woman at the end. At one point she almost gets sent away to be married off against her will, and even if her choice to join the coven of witches or satanists 
wasn't the brightest, it was the first real time she made a decision for herself in the entire film. Ralph Innocent does a splendid job here too. His gruff Yorkshire accent is accentuated with the traditional English dialect used throughout the film. For me, both him and Taylor Joy were the standouts, the latter essentially carrying the film for long periods with a very impressive performance. Kate Dickey also impresses. Any fan of Game of Thrones will know that she was able to play the neurotic motherly figure as good as anyone. Finally, Harvey Scrimshaw puts in a reasonable effort too, and despite overacting slightly at certain points, I thought the scenes in his sick bed after returning to the farm were impressive for such a young actor. Visually, the film was extremely well shot, the use of natural light throughout echoing that of the much lauded Revenant released in the same year, not to mention the slow shots of the woods with fog to boot, adding an eeriness to the family's small clearing of land. Jaron Blaschke did a fantastic job of really immersing the viewer into the period. The costume designs were apparently hand-stitched, highly detailed and very impressive looking. Musically, the string arrangements did their job, adding tension and suspense effectively. A special mention must be made to Eggers, the production team and writers who went to great detail in recreating the 17th century environment, speech and feel perfectly. Overall, it's not your average horror flick, full of jump scares and the usual nonsense, which is probably for the best, because I'm not a fan of that anyway. It's more psychological, focusing instead on the slow breakdown of the family. Uh, now, do I think it's a fantastic film? Uh, no, I don't. But it did keep my attention from the start to the end, and it was decent enough. And I'll be giving it a 3 out of 5. Remember guys, if you're enjoying the content we're putting out, then be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and iTunes. And give us a little follow on Facebook at MovieBurner Entertainment and on Twitter at MovieBurners. You can also catch up with all the latest reviews we're putting out at the MovieBurner blog on MovieBurnerEntertainment.org. Until the next time, goodbye.